Recently, on a trip to visit my grandfather, I mentioned to him how I had an interest in blacksmithing one day. Now, one of the issues with blacksmithing is, of course, the tools and materials. And one of the most essential tools you'll need is an anvil. Now, there's three kind of anvils out there you can buy. You can buy wrought iron, you can buy cast iron, or you can buy steel. Now, you want either the wrought iron or the cast steel. The cast iron is absolute garbage. Don't buy it. So, I mentioned this to my grandfather, and he told me how his father had an old piece of railroad track that he had cut into roughly into the form of an anvil. Now, these are actually very commonly used as anvils, and so he gave it to me, and I decided to do a little bit of work on it and give it some touch-ups. Here's a photo of the unaltered anvil. Now, this thing is in phenomenal shape for being four generations old. It's a nice, solid, heavy chunk of railroad track. It weighs anywhere between 35 to 40 pounds. There's just a few small problems with it. There's no horn, no hardy or pitchet hole for tools. The face and edges are a little bit too round. I believe my great-grandfather used an acetylene torch to cut this roughly into the shape of an anvil, and that's actually going to save us a ton of time. Step one is to machine the face of the anvil off. This is to give it a smooth surface and help give it those nice crisp edges. And here is a video of us doing that. What we're doing here is using a milling machine to mill off about 15 thousandths of an inch for each pass off of the top of my anvil. This is needed that nice flat top. Alright, the next step is to cut the hardy hole into the anvil. Now, the hardy hole is a square hole, so this presents a problem. How do you cut a square hole in a piece of steel? Well, what you could do is you could drill a hole through it and file out the corners to make a square. But first, we did a hardness test and a spectrograph reading on this. After we took the hardness test, we got about a 27, which means it's pretty hard stuff. And we did a spectrograph reading on it, which told us that it was a high carbon steel with a high manganese content. So what does that mean? It means it's harder than crap and that we can't cut it. So what do you do? You use what's called an EDM. An EDM is a CNC driven electrical discharge machine. In short, what this machine does is it takes a hair thin wire, it passes a charge through this wire and through your part. And this whole part is submerged in a tank. Now this causes a short in the wire and causes these exceedingly hot sparks. These sparks literally disintegrate the material that you're cutting and gives you extremely fine and detailed cuts. And just for your viewing pleasure, that's the EDM wire. That's how thin it is. That's how detailed your cuts are. So here's a video of the EDM in use. Here is the EDM machine. The anvil is bolted down to the bottom of the machine and the electrode wire is automatically fed through a pre-drilled hole in the anvil from the top electrode to the bottom of the electrode. The machine will then follow a pre-programmed CNC operation to cut the square hardy hole into the anvil. This is the console that we use to display and upload the CNC program into the EDM machine. Here is the EDM actually cutting machine. The cutting is taking place at that small blue spark. These are two photos after the EDM has finished its work and cut out the hardy hole. After cutting out the hardy hole, we used a bandsaw to give the anvil a nice clean edge. 
All right, our surface is milled. Our hardy hole is cut. The next step is to shape the horn of the anvil. Now, unfortunately, as we previously mentioned, this anvil is extremely tough, and this means no more machining. Now, we could use, if we wanted, a carbide bit to shape the horn of this anvil, but break a carbide tip and you're out a lot of money. And neither I or the instructors want to cost the school money for a product they're helping me out on the side. So, what does that mean? Time to get out of the grinder. I'll spare you the 50 minutes of me grinding on it because, trust me, it's boring. But here's the final result, and I'd say it turned out pretty good. Got some nice surfaces for bending metal over the horn of the anvil, and I'm really happy with how this thing's starting to turn out. Unfortunately, grinding leaves a lot of ugly tooling marks, so I used a couple of different machining files to file down the horn, uh, give it a nice uniform shape, and here's the result.